So um, everyone here, I assume, is for, here for the, uh, the accessibility talk and, and how to go off and make your uh, Drupal 8 site more, or how and why Drupal 8 makes your site more accessible and how, to make, how it makes it easier. And uh, so um, if anyone's not looking forward to a talk on accessibility, then, uh, well, yeah, this is, this is the room for that. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, continue. Um, my name is Mike Gifford. I'm the president of Open Concept Consulting and uh, I'm also the uh, Drupal 8 uh, core maintainer. Uh, been in spearheading Drupal accessibility issues in, uh, in Drupal now since about 2008, 2009. Uh, and it's been a, a really interesting experience working through the, the work of, of uh, uh, work with the Drupal community and working with, with uh, people outside of the Drupal community as well to, to make this, this, uh, uh, this project as, as accessible as, as, uh, as uh, we can make it. Um, so, So first of all, a couple things. Um, how many people here um, know what Section 508 is? Excellent. I thought so. This is you know in the U.S. after all. Um, now Section 508 is. Uh, does anyone know when Section 508 was 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 written? When it became law? 1997. Can you remember what the web was like in 1997? Yeah. Okay. So so. It's, uh, there have been a lot of changes since then, and unfortunately, uh, Section 508 hasn't been able to keep up with that. Um, but uh, there's a, a legislation that, or uh, not a legislation, there's a, a set of guidelines that the World Wide Web Consortium has put out uh, called w WCAG, or, or the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and they're uh, right now we're on WCAG 2.0. Has everyone heard of WCAG? Few less people, but you know, it's, it's, it's still something that most people know about. Um, WCAG is, is a, a really uh, great step forward in a lot of ways because it's, it's based on uh, principles instead of on specific technology. So um, the principles that, that it's, it's uh, built on are, are being um, uh, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So they knew that the technology and the framework was going to change, so they wanted to be able to, uh, to take a step up and look at what is it that people are trying to do with the technology instead of address that specific technology itself. Um, so it's, it's, a, uh, it's a great framework. It was um, released in 2010, uh, sorry, yeah, in December of 2010. Um, and there's been a lot of, of technology that's changed since uh, December of 2010. So it's a, uh, you can find that, that, that there are, there's movement within the World Wide Web Consortium to try and, and update and change uh, the World Wide Web, uh, that, that standard set. Um, I also wanted to talk about uh, P, PWD, or people with disabilities. Um, when people think about uh, web accessibility, generally they think about uh, people who are blind, which is a, an obvious extreme use case. Um, and there's, there's, uh, there's people, um, that's a really important one, um, and people who use screen readers and other assistive technology, it, it's, a, um, it's a really difficult challenge to try and, and, and to, to, to deal with that particular disability. But there are a lot of other disabilities that are part of, uh, that are affected by, by um, accessibility, uh, by, by, by changes in, in the technology in the web. So, uh, for example, you have uh, people with low vision, people who are colorblind, uh, people who have uh, issues with, with um, motor problems, whether it's, it's uh, uh, just, just having tremors or having, uh, not having fine motor control. Um, there's also cognitive and learning disabilities. There, there are some, some issues that, uh, some disabilities that are temporary. For example, if you are, are injured uh, or on med some medication, you may find that you're, uh, you're not able to go off and to, to have as, as full function as you are when you're not, uh, you know, without the injury or without the, the medication. Um, there's also people who are hard of hearing, um, or people who have epilepsy. Um, the, uh, there's a, a huge demographic that's, that's beginning to, to face a, a serious, um, or to, to, to be of concern for accessibility right now that, that, doesn't, that doesn't really think about or talk about accessibility, and that's the, uh, the baby boomer population. Because um, as we get older, we tend to lose our, our, uh, our, our, our vision, our fine motor controls it diminishes, um, and you know if we're lucky enough to live long, uh, live a very long time, we're not going to have the, the same level of, of uh, abilities as we do right now. Um, so you know just just trying to go off and think about uh, 
people with disabilities as being um, more than just that one extreme use case. That there's there's so many different people who um, who use so many different kinds of technology to to interact with the web. So um, there's there's people who who uh, who don't use uh, who use eye trackers or people who use uh, sip and puff mechanisms to be able to, to navigate the web. Uh, people who are using uh, various different combinations of, of assistive technology in order to uh, to navigate through through the web. Um, how many people here um, have ever gone off and spent like you know a couple hours navigating a web or navigating without without their 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 mouse? It's it, it, it's a real challenge to try and, and spend any time navigating without a mouse through your your your. Uh, um, either on the web or, or through your um, through your desktop, it certainly is possible to do, um, but it's it's not uh, it's not always that easy to, to, to make that happen. But it's a great learning experience to go off and to, 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 to make that jump. Um, so, um, in terms of, of the the history of the web, uh, we, and why accessibility is important. Um, we can go back and, and look at uh, Tim Berners-Lee and, and his, his vision of the web was one that was going to be um, available universal, universally and to have the, the uh, to make sure that, that the web was something that was going to be available for everyone. That's where the real true power comes in. Um, and unfortunately, the, the, I think that the web development community in general has, has forgotten that, that element and we've sort of rushed ahead uh, for, for because of market forces or because of uh, just human nature for the, the latest shiny, um, you know, whatever the shiny object is that we've been running for. And, and um, at the moment, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of excitement about headless Drupal. And, and headless Drupal is really cool. I can't argue with headless Drupal being really cool, but it does introduce a whole series of other accessibility problems um, and unknowns because um, we know how it works with, and what the challenges are with, with HTML templates. We don't really know what, what all the challenges are going to be with, with a headless Drupal implementation. There aren't that many examples of, of uh, very accessible headless implementations. Um, so, so what makes accessibility uh, a hard issue? Um, so on the right, uh, I've got a photo of uh, an, an old friend of mine, Alan Shane, who's my uh, disability mentor, and uh, he's done um, more more work with uh, disability, uh, the disability rights movement, uh, than than anyone else that I know, in trying to to to, to raise awareness of, of the uh, rights and responsibilities of, of 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 caring for people with disabilities in our society. Um, he's going to be uh, getting himself an eye tracker fairly sh soon, but but uh, back at the the beginning of, uh, of, of Drupal 7, I went off and videotaped uh, 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 him going off and tabbing through the, the Drupal 6, Drupal 7 uh, implementation and just the, how difficult and painful it was to sort of tab through all of the links in the menu structure. Um, you may not have noticed this, but in, in, since Drupal 7, we've had a skip links function built into the core so that if you're tabbing through the, the page, you can jump all those menu links and go down to the main content. Um, this is something that's really quite useful for, uh, for people who, who, who primarily navigate by the keyboard. And, and there's more that we can do with that, but it's, it's, it's a, a good step in the direction to, to help people with, who, are key, who use the keyboard for navigation. Um, so um, on the internet, everything is in flux, and there, there's, uh, there's changes that are happening with the browsers, with the, ecos uh, with the, um, with the, the sites, the, the expectations and design change. Is, it, is, is, a, is a flat design still in? Does anyone know if that, is that still a thing? You know, so you know, the, 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 the trends and the, the, uh, um, go, go quite rapidly in the, the, uh, um, the web development community. And, and uh, in order to keep up with it, there's, there's you know, the technology changes. And, and uh, that every time you're, you're re-theming your website, there are implications for accessibility. Every time you use a new, new framework, every time you um, are, are you know, upgrading from, if you're upgrading from, from different versions of your software, there are accessibility implications throughout that. Um, we also have to look at, at uh, user needs. Um, Often people don't have just one disability. Sometimes people have multiple disabilities. Uh, often people are using the assistive technology in ways that we didn't plan or didn't expect, that uh, or that the the developers didn't uh, didn't actually uh, have in mind when they, they had built that that application. Um, there's also a lot of devices that are, are uh, in use. Um, how many people here have a uh, an Android device that they use? And what about uh, iPhone? What about everything else? Any other? So a couple people have some other kind of phone. 
so you know, there, there aren't that many people who have have you know some other device. But if you've got you know a Firefox phone or uh, whatever else, like an old flip phone, I mean, there's there's only so much you can do with with a uh, with the older phones. But uh, but there are uh, versions of of operating systems for 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 smartphones that are not um, that are not the standard iPhone and and, and Android devices. Um, and even within Android, there's a lot of variation with, within, uh, within that. And, and uh, uh, so you're, you're not just dealing with one particular application with one particular uh, challenge. Um, and and uh, um, how many people here think they have a screen reader on them right now? Okay, anyone who put up their hand about having an Android or an iPhone device also has a screen reader. Android comes with uh, TalkBack built-in and iPhone. Every Apple device comes with VoiceOver built-in. So if you're ever trying to try and see what, what a, a, um, a screen reader looks like or how it works, if you've got an Apple device, you can easily find out what a, how a screen reader works and, and just enable it through the interface. Um, the the, uh, the other challenge with with uh, assistive technology is that that we're we're really at the stage where the browsers were uh, back in the early 90s. Um, there's no standardization of how the assistive technology works. So you could find that the uh, that it works for NVDA for some people, but it doesn't work for for JAWS. It doesn't. It, maybe it works for. Um, there's there's no consistency around how how these tools are, are implemented. There are some best practices, and certainly people, JAWS has been the leader in the community for a long period of time. So a lot of people like NVDA is following the the uh, trying to emulate the patterns of JAWS. Uh, but VoiceOver and Chrome Vox have have a very different way of, of approaching. The, um, the 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 implementation of the the, uh, the of their screen reader. So you can't assume that just because it works in one screen reader that'll work in others. It's it's a good it's a good bet to, to try it in one. Uh, you don't need to necessarily try it in all screen readers, but you can't know that it's going to work in all of them. And of course, all of these assistive technology devices get updated uh, fairly regularly. So you know there are, are new ver multiple versions of of, uh, uh, of the software being used to to access your website um, as as not every Everyone's using the latest version of the code. So, um, the other things that have changed um, in Drupal uh, since Drupal seven, a lot of uh, a, a lot of stuff has changed. Um, HTML five wasn't really an option in Drupal seven. It wasn't finalized until after Dr Drupal seven was released. Um, the WIA area, which is uh, the Web Accessibility Initiatives uh, Accessible Rich Internet Applications, which I'll be talking about later. Um, Area uh, was also released uh, after Drupal 7. We added a little bit of area within Drupal 7. If you look at the um, install process <coughs> for Drupal 7, there are, are some elements that, that are, uh, we've used a, a little bit of, of area in that, but we've used it quite extensively in, in Drupal 8, uh, and not just in the, the main library, but also in the, um, we've, a lot of our, our, the libraries that we've included, whether it's CK Editor or um, yeah, some of the other, the libraries we brought in are, are, have, have area included within that. Um, so uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the last thing, the, the list of, of new elements that have been added is, is ATAG, which is the, um, the Authoring Tools Accessibility Guideline. Has anyone heard of ATAG? So um, ATAG is a great standard, not just because it was designed primarily in Canada, although that really does help. Um, <laughs> but um, it's also uh, great because it's looking at, at one of the main problems that we have with, um, with, with content is, or so with, with accessible websites, is that you may, you may be able to go off and create a, a really ex, uh, accessible framework for your, your users to go off and to create content. But as soon as they start putting in their content, they're copying and pasting it from Word or doing whatever else, and it, it breaks the accessibility you've spent you know, months trying to build into the product. Um, but ATAG is, is a, it's really an effort to, to try and make it easier for content authors to produce good content. Um, the, uh, we, we also have, have other things that weren't really considered when we were looking at Drupal 7. Um, how many people have uh, really enjoyed the, 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 the graphics that are included in, in, a lot, in a lot of their, in the new iPhone and a lot of new devices, like parallax effects? Do they like that sort of the, the ability of the, the, the device to sort of seem like it's moving and sort of have that three-dimensional effect? Uh, I think it's pretty cool. It makes some people sick. It's, you know, the, the visually induced motion sickness. It wasn't something that we were aware of beforehand, and, and we still don't really know how to test for that and how to address this. 
but uh, VIMS is a, an issue that we need to try and address, and, and uh, I think that, that there are going to be approaches for, for dealing with that, so you can turn off those, uh, those animation effects as you're, you're moving through the, the, the site. Um, we've also looked a little bit at uh, uh, Dragging Naturally Speaking users, so there's Dragging Naturally Speaking and Window Speech Recognition. Um, those are two, two tools that, that people who have mobility challenges uh, tend to use uh, if they're trying to, to navigate the web by voice. And, and I don't really quite understand how, like, it, it is an interesting thing to think that you can do that. You know, click in the top right corner and that you can tell your computer verbally how to go off and to navigate through the web. So there's, but, but there are ways to do this. And, and in fact, the number of people who use voice control in, in order to, to navigate the web is probably higher than the people who use uh, screen reading tools. So uh, if, you're, if you're looking at, at a community that, that um, would, could really benefit from from having some more advice or some more some more accessibility work done on it. The uh, um, the Dragon Naturally Speaking community is, is certainly one that I think could be could be quite useful. Um, the uh, the other thing that, that I wanted to you know talk about here was, was form errors. Um, in Drupal 7, we hadn't really set up a way for, for people, if they had entered in a web form and hit, hit submit and there was an error in the form, we didn't really deal with that all that well. We didn't do much to go off and to, to actually address the concerns of WK because modifying the forms, API, uh, forms API, it's a lot of work and we didn't quite get to that in, in Drupal 7. In Drupal 8, uh, we, we made some, uh, some suggestions and we've been working through that and we did get it into core and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later, but, um, but we, we, we weren't able to go off and, and uh, to, to get into Drupal 7, but, and we've almost got it. It's an experimental module in Drupal 8, so um, definitely we'll want to, to have people look at that in the future. Um, the, the, the most noticeable thing I think that people are going to look at when they're, they're seeing Drupal 8, though, for the first time um, is, is, uh, is how, because we, we've, we've looked at CSS gradients, and uh, we realized that the way that we were assessing the color contrast on the um, on CSS gradients wasn't wasn't done properly. And once we did the the uh, proper evaluation with uh, another tool, we realized that we had to, we had to go off and make the the dark blue background uh, darker um, so that there was going to be sufficient contrast. Um, now I wanted to go off and, and and talk briefly here about the importance of of defaults because. Um, uh, you know, in you know, Dries mentioned in his keynote the number of, of, uh, of Drupal website or the, uh, a website that he ran into that was this, you know default Bartek, and I don't know if that it had changed the uh, the blue background uh, using the color module, but there's a lot of, of websites out there that haven't bothered to even change the, the background of the uh, of the blue to something else. Uh, maybe they've changed the logo, um, but all of those websites because they're just using the default stock install. Are, have, access, are, have an, an accessibility problem with that for people with low vision because they just don't have a sufficient contrast. Um, so by making the background darker, we're helping uh, possibly thousands of sites go and be more accessible by default. Um, in, the, uh, uh, in, in preparing the, the DrupalCon presentation, I, I decided to, uh, to use the slides that were presented by the, um, by the association and I did a, a quick review of the accessibility of, of the slides, and the colors didn't match, didn't meet WKX contrast requirements either. So I, I used a tool called Tangaroo to go off and to, to pick a color that was close to the mustard yellow that they had, had recommended, and pick a, a slightly darker brown as, as part of that. Um, but you know, these are, are, are subtle differences. I don't know that anyone in the Drupal Association would necessarily pick that out and understand that. But for any of the, the organizations that are using this, this slide, uh, slide deck, they're going to repeat the same problem. If, you, if you're having something that's being replicated a lot of you know, thousands of times, potentially, because um, there's not just the, the presentations, but there's also um, all of the, the printed material. Um, if, you, if you don't do that, that evaluation of, the, of your style guide, you can find yourself in, 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 a, in a, a real pickle down the line if you, if you haven't, um, if you haven't you know, considered these things up front. Um, and uh, unfortunately, not all accessibility challenges are, are as easy as, as this to see and pick out. Um, the, uh, here's a, an example of, of uh, um, you can see a, the, the title, the, the text hard is not accessible, um, or it doesn't meet WCAG 2.0 AA requirements, but the, the text C is uh, accessible. So you can, 
that has enough contrast. And it's not much of a difference, but it's a little bit of a difference. Um, often people get into to challenges by, by adding uh, background images. So um, in this case, I've thrown a background image behind the text there, and I, I wanted to, to verify that this uh, does actually meet uh, WCAG requirements, and, and it does. There's sufficient contrast between the gray and the black. But it would be really easy to go off and just make that, make the logo that I, I or the watermark in the that I put in the background just a little bit darker, a little bit more visible, but would also reduce the contrast enough that would 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 present problems for uh, for people moving forward. Um, so the most of the changes that that uh, we've made in in, uh, in Drupal 8 are are semantic. They're in the code base. They're they're tied to to HTML5 and area, um, and they're things that most people probably aren't going to see. Um, unless you're using an assistive technology tool that's, that's taking advantage of it. Um, we're also, um, many of the changes that we've made in, in Drupal 8 are, are incremental changes. Um, so we've, we've uh, you know, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of websites that are running Drupal 7. Um, we've been able to take the, the websites or the feedback that we've gotten from a, a vast community of, of, of users and try and, and learn from that community and, um, and, and Ad, find ways to advance uh, advance Drupal and make Drupal even more accessible. Um, there's uh, you know, and 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 the the uh, yeah we're we're working to try and uh, prioritize uh, um, the 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 accessibility issues within within the issue queue as much as we can. Um, but but also there's there's a, a lot of groups who have. Uh, prioritize accessibility in their own function and who have have chosen Drupal um, as a as a platform um, so anyone here from the UK not oh two couple people so you'll know who the RNIB is um, everyone here in the US will probably know who the NFB is uh, AbilityNet is a, is a UK organization like the uh, uh, RNIB um, those, those top three are all organizations that that uh, that are using Drupal 7 and um, ha, you know are, are work with with uh, uh, um, primarily the, the the blind community but not um, not exclusively um, AMI is a, is a, a Canadian based organization um, and uh, uh, they've just recently re really uh, put out a, a Drupal 8 uh, implementation which was great um, and uh, there's also the um, uh, the Federation du Avoglais du France. I should my French should be way better than that, and I apologize. Uh, the very first uh, accessibility organization to launch with uh, with Drupal 8 was uh, was a French organization, and, and I think the folks at Happy Co-op went off and, and uh, uh, put that out. Um, I wanted to highlight on the bottom right the Broadcast Accessibility Fund, which is one of our clients. Um, one thing that we did there that was was uh, fairly unique was we set up a, a Bilingual website with um, with with uh, uh, sign language as well. So there's there's uh, videos associated with each of the pages, um, so, and and all of the content is translated into the American Sign Language as well as the uh, SL uh, or the LSQ of the uh, Langue de Sign du, du Quebec. Um, but you know, so we've we've, we've you know, we've done a lot of work. Accessibility has a lot of challenges with it and a lot of, of complexity. Um, but you know, the goal was, of this presentation was to try and make it easy. And so here's a picture of my cat. She's 20 years old. Her eyesight's not as good. She has trouble walking. She's, she's quite the sad thing. But uh, she, she's, uh, you know, I had to throw in a picture of, of a, you know, a cat for the internet. And, um, so uh, if, if, you, if you start with, with good defaults, um, then your website is going to be more accessible. And Drupal 7 had in, in Drupal 6 uh, a real commitment to, to standard, uh, standardized, uh, standard, standard code development or, or uh, web standards. Um, we've, uh, we've also um, you know, built on work in Drupal 7 uh, to, to improve the, the templates. Uh, and, and so um, some parts of them have been rewritten but have been tested to see that those rewritten parts are, are able to go off and, and still meet the accessibility requirements that, that they, they met in Drupal 7. Um, I want to you know, highlight the importance of a transparent issue queue, and that's, that also really does help with uh, accessibility issues, because you can do a search in Google about an accessibility problem on, um, with a Drupal website, and you'll probably land on an on, on item in the issue queue that can highlight uh, concerns that you, you 
um, the concerns you might have, and, and maybe there's a patch that will address it. Maybe it needs to be. Maybe there's a patch that's waiting to be RTBC that would help get into core. Um, maybe there's there's you, you can identify that. But having that transparent issue queue allows people to understand if that issue is already there, and verify that there's movement in um, in the on the project for that. Um, the uh, um, the other thing is is that there's a culture of of, uh, um, of, of accessibility that has grown into the, the accessibility uh, it has grown into Drupal. Um, so uh, you know this is the, the third um, third accessibility talk or sorry this is the, the second of, of uh, three accessibility talks here at Drupal uh, DrupalCon. Um, there are often issues that that are identified as having accessibility issues and are are fixed before I even see them. Um, there's a, uh, a group of people uh, who are involved in core who are very aware of this issue and who are uh, who take take um, take this issue very seriously, and and the culture is one that we understand as a community the importance of accessibility and, and that's a, a really important element. Um, there's. Uh, there's also a lot of times where we've looked for best practices, and, and sometimes we haven't been able to find best practices in the Drupal community. So we've had to actually create those best practices in order to, to, uh, to in order to go off and, and, and to, to build uh, to build Drupal seven and Drupal eight. Um, and hopefully, we'll see other organizations uh, beginning to, to follow us. I think the the, um, the WordPress community is is, uh, is is catching up quickly, and, and uh, they they certainly are looking at the work that we're doing and, and finding ways to uh, to emulate and to improve on what we're doing. Um, and uh, and there's there's certainly other open source projects that can can benefit from from the work that that uh, that Drupal's done, been doing for all these years. Um, so uh, HTML5 is a is another uh, big improvement for um, with with Drupal 8, um, and one of the one of the huge things that I mean, yes, Drupal 8 or sorry, HTML5 is going to be better for SEO. It's going to be better for mobile devices and your mobile experience. It's definitely more more uh, future compatible. Um, but it's most of that is because it's building in more semantic semantics into the code. So you have elements in your HTML5 like the header element or the footer element or the aside or the main that allow you to go off and to to divvy up your content into to different regions to, to, to allow it to get to have more context and, and meaning so that whether you're a machine or whether you're a person using a screen reader you can understand the the the, the context with which that that sentence that sentence or that paragraph is, is sitting within um, there's also uh, form elements uh, like the the email phone uh, URL and uh, what else is there? There's there's a um, and number uh, there's a number of HTML5 elements that, that are being added uh, to ensure that that you can uh, validate uh, the, the the inputs from users and, and uh, to, to do that in an accessible way as well. Um, in in terms of, of uh, uh, one of the biggest changes that we've we've added is in in um, uh, in Drupal 8 is is the details and summary elements, um, which uh, in when in Drupal 6 and earlier, when you were to expand or, or collapse a, f uh, a web form, it was using field sets to do this. Um, field sets were a great solution before HTML5, but assistive technology doesn't work very well at all for nested field sets. So if you have more than one field set working within, um, within the site, you can't, the, the, this assistive technology doesn't know how to deal with that particularly well. So we weren't able to go off and use field sets to, to link together uh, input types like the date input type or the, um, the, the uh, uh, if there's a phone number input type. We, we should be able to do that, but we weren't able to, to make that semantic re relationship between the fields in, um, in Drupal 7 because of, of this problem with nested field sets. Um, we're able to do that now, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, Drupal had to lead the lead the march on on detail and summary elements. I think Firefox um, is going to have detail and summary elements fully supported in the next release uh, in you know Firefox uh, 49, um, but but it certainly isn't something that's enabled by default in, in that browser. Um, so uh, I mentioned area earlier, and I want to talk a bit more about this. Uh, the uh, little graphic here is uh, from Carl Groves, and I don't actually want you to area all the things. Um, there was a, a study uh, recently that that, uh, that evaluated a bunch of websites, and area has been implemented in many cases so poorly that that um, 
the, that Steve Faulkner, who's a, an accessibility uh, guru, I think he's in the UK, um, was said that, that in his, his evaluation, if you eliminated the area from the web, website, that you would make the, the, um, the web pages more accessible, not, not less accessible. So it's a, area is a, a great tool to extend HTML in places where it's necessary, but I think a lot of times developers are, are using it as a shortcut. Uh, so instead of using proper HTML to semantically uh, create um, information like buttons, they'll just go off and take any tag and just say, well, we'll just define this as a button using area, um, which theoretically kind of would work, except that's not how assistive technology devices use it. It's not something you can rely on if you're looking at barriers to, uh, to, to, to users. Um, so, uh, so definitely use HTML5 first, don't use, uh, if, if this, the semantics is defined by the HTML5, um, make, don't also repeat that with area. Um, and there may be a few places in core where we need to go off and, and look through and eliminate that, because I think that we, we did uh, implement some, uh, some of these changes with both, uh, both, the, uh, both area and the HTML5 uh, descriptions, but um, it's, it's something that in general we've, we've uh, um, we've got a pattern that you can work with and that people can use as a reference, so it will make, you, make it easier when you're doing your implementations. Um, area is quite complicated. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on area because uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, there are landmark roles, which you'll, you'll be able to see within your templates. There are states, things like area hidden and, and uh, an area checked, which are, are on and off. Um, there are properties, so things that define relationships. If you look at form elements, you have the um, the label, you have the input form, and you have a description, and the description is tied to the label by a, uh, a, a property, an area uh, labeled by a property. Um, there's also uh, area live elements, which are, are really quite useful for content that changes. So, um, so much of the modern web is about um, ongo uh, about modif uh, pages that get modified on the fly. So you've got some Ajax in there that, that updates the page as you are um, as you've, you've entered some content, or maybe a field appears because you've you've uh, you've entered that you're you're in the states instead of Canada, so the postal code changes. Assistive technology doesn't know that that is is happening unless you unless you tell it that the page has changed. And Area Live is is the the, uh, the right now the best technique to go off and to inform users that the, that page has changed. Um, and there's you know, Area Live, Area Relevant, Area Atomic, Area Busy. And uh, it's a, you know, a lot that, that, that can be done uh, well for screen reader users if it's done properly. Um, there are some, um, some advantages also for, um, for, right now areas is largely benefiting people who, who, are, who use screen readers. There aren't that many other devices that are using this. Um, but that is, oops, that had to happen. Um, the, uh, there, um, but more and more, there, there's a, an, an ability to often hang uh, JavaScript elements onto the, the area and have it be useful for, uh, for more than just the, uh, the, the, the screen reader users. So um, HTML5 uh, boilerplate, how many people are familiar with that? So this, is, um, this was quite, uh, quite common when Drupal came out, um, and they came up with a solution for CSS, the problem with CSS display none that was quite similar to what we did with Drupal.org, but it was sort of done at too, too close at the same time, and, and, um, uh, and so we weren't able to go off and adopt that same uh, nomenclature then. Uh, do people know what the problem is with uh, the, the uh, CSS display none? So the problem is, is that if you use CSS display none to hide content on your page, the, the, the screen reader interprets that literally. So um, it might be hidden from the page for, for sighted users, which is fine, but it's also hidden for, uh, for screen reader users. So if you have headings in core, which we have a lot of headings in core, um, all that, and you may not want to see that. You may not want to have all your users have that clutter on your screen, but it's important for screen reader users. And if you're not using um, the, uh, in Drupal 7, if you're not using the area, uh, sorry, element invisible uh, to, to hide that content, then um, you're, you're, you're going to, if you're, if you're using um, display none uh, to hide that, that heading information, then it's not going to be useful for people with disabilities. So um, the, 
so we've, we've uh, uh, you know, in, in AAA tried to go off and take on a, a stance of proudly built elsewhere. We wanted to, to learn from other projects and adopt other projects, and so we, we took the, um, we, we took the, the, uh, the language uh, that was implemented by the uh, HTML5 boilerplate and implemented that in, in core. So if you've got any modules or, or themes that, that, uh, that you're using, you should look at, at upgrading, uh, upgrading those from uh, element invisible and element hidden to, um, to hidden, visibly hidden, and uh, visibly hidden on focus. Um, and that's, that's um, and the other thing is that these, these things, it's also important because um, this, how these assistive technologies address things like on, um, um, it changes over time. So right now there's an existing bug to modify what we've done in Drupal 8 because voiceover users uh, do not, there's a, there's a bug with how, it, how this, the CSS classes work with um, voiceover users. Um, fortunately, for, for, um, there's one place to change those classes, one place to update them, and there's a patch that just needs to be reviewed and updated uh, in order to go off and, and to, um, in order to fix that for, for, uh, for future sites. Um, so uh, this is a, a logo on the, on the right of the Accessible Icon Initiative. Um, there's uh, a movement in the, uh, in the disability rights community to, to not show people with disabilities as, as passive victims, but to see them more active as, as active members of society. Um, and uh, so I wanted to, to highlight that because it's, it's a cool logo. Um, but also to, to highlight some of the, the, uh, the centralized things that, that we've added to Drupal and Drupal 8 to, to, help, um, to, to help make it easier for, for, for your accessibility uh, efforts. Um, the first one is, is uh, that we, we have, um, we've added uh, a, a JavaScript uh, library called uh, Dr Dr uh, Drupal Announce which will, if you're encapsulating, if there's, if there's text that changes based on, on uh, using Ajax, you can now have a simple, uh, consistent way to go off and to, to call Area Live and to, uh, to make sure that you have, have a, an accessible implementation to alert the user that that page has been updated. Um, there's also, uh, for keyboard-only users, the uh, Drupal Tabbing Manager. Um, there, in complex web, um, I, I guess, in complex web I interfaces, it's, it's not uncommon to get stuck in a keyboard trap where you're tabbing through the interface and then suddenly you get stuck in a loop somewhere that you can't break out of. What the, what the tabbing manager does is it, it allows the developers to, to control the flow of the, the, user, uh, the user's uh, focus through the page. And, and ideally, it will be going from um, in a logical progression as you're, as you're, you're browsing the site. Um, so you know, not uh, most keyboard only users uh, have have their site um, and so you're, you need to try and look at you know, where are they looking and how are they navigating the site where should they expect the focus for the for the the page to be uh, so we've also created some good defaults um, and uh, uh, we, we required alt text in in Drupal 8 which is a um, it's a pretty big thing I don't think there's any other um, uh, CMS that is requiring alt text by default at the moment. Now, this can be disabled, um, and it was actually quite controversial in the, the accessibility community for a while because it's not always appropriate to use um, alt text. There are some times where you don't want to have images associated with the text. If it's a uh, it's purely de a decorative element, if you're using that image more than once, if you have like you know five hearts in a row, you don't want to have to say heart, 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 heart. There are times when you want it to be uh, to be blank, but for the most part, you want to have um, users go off and, and to make it as difficult to enter in the alt text as it is to skip it, so that they're more likely to go off and to, to take the time to fill in the, art tech, the, the, the alt text and to write heart or whatever within the, the interface. Um, we've also made some, some improvements to, to views and tables, um, and I wanted to, uh, to talk about the <coughs> Um, inline form errors as well, just, just briefly, we've, this is again, I mentioned earlier, but it's huge in terms of, of uh, dealing with interactive forms. Um, I would encourage people to try and, and uh, enable uh, the, the, uh, uh, the inline form errors by default uh, because it, the, the changes are quite minor. I can, I can talk to you about what the problems are and it, it, I, can, I agree that they, 
they shouldn't be in core, I shouldn't, that, that as it is right now, it shouldn't be enabled by default in core, but it's, it's in core as a experimental uh, module and it, it shouldn't break anything and most of your users will not notice the changes and it won't be a problem for most websites. Um, but it is going to be a problem for some and it wasn't quite stable and strong enough to be enabled by default in core. Hopefully that's again something we can address in, uh, in Drupal, uh, Drupal 8.2 or 8.3. The, um, the inline form errors allows you to, to, uh, to have links that jump from the, the, uh, the t description to the, the, um, the inline t the, to the text where, the, the, uh, where you would actually change the form item. Um, it'll, it has uh, descriptions that are, are defined by more than just color. So there's, there's an icon as, a well, as well as the color. So it, it addresses people who, have, uh, who are colorblind. Um, there's area described by in the error form. So you have the additional semantics there. Um, Wanted to talk uh, also about the uh, big deals in Drupal. Uh, we all know Dries, and uh, although Jam's not wearing his red suit, you can also see that, that he's uh, he's there. But uh, Vincenzo Robano is, is on the right, and uh, he uh, he as a in his final year of of, uh, of high school in the summer before he began university, he contributed more to Drupal core than. Uh, than any government or any, com like all governments in the world and, uh, and all uh, you know, accessibility organizations to accessibility. So as one person, he went off and tested and evaluated and, and identified problems um, more than, than all of these other institutions that should be aware of these problems and should be contributing to, um, contributing to core and paying, paying this, you know, helping to, to push this forward and, and so far aren't. Um, the uh, um, CK editor is a big, big improvement, um, and uh, that that was brought into core, and, and it, was, it was really a reciprocal process because not only was uh, was core Im, Im, improved by by bringing in CK editor as a mature WYSIWYG editor, but also we were able to push back on CK editor and see that CK editor um, inherited the the uh, uh, the best practices that uh, they, they, they improved some some of their interface to to, to adopt better practices. Um, we also uh, had the language of parts, which for multilingual websites was quite important. Uh, if your if your web page is defined to be in uh, in French and uh, and you are uh, you're, you're, you've you've got a, an English phrase within that, um, the screen reader isn't going to know what to do with the English phrase. Um, it, it, it will read the, the page header and it'll, interpret, it'll start reading whatever the, the page header's language is defined in. And then when it gets down to the, the, the string that is in the other language, it will pronounce it very badly in whatever language that is. Um, the, um, the views UI was another big one. Um, the, uh, in Drupal uh, 7, there, it, it was quite accessible for most people who were, were managing the uh, um, we're trying to administer and, and, and edit the the, uh, the website. Um, uh, Carolyn from Berkeley is here, uh, who's improved a lot of, of Panoply and C tools and uh, panels uh, with with uh, work with the university there, um, which is which is amazing. Um, and, but the other area that people were running into was views and, and the accessibility of views. But bringing views into core me meant that we had to make that user interface accessible. We had to it had to be raised up to WCAG 2.0 AA. Um, and it's one of the more powerful features of, of Drupal. So to, to sort of encourage you know, the, the blind community to use Drupal and then say, oh, well, you can't use the most powerful you know, c contributed modules it really wasn't all that fair. Um, but there's also, uh, so, so that's been improved and we've added some other things like uh, uh, caption and summaries is, is something that you can define uh, for, for views tables as, as part of core as well. And uh, a tag. Um, um, ATAG has uh, yeah, touched on it a bit briefly, but the, uh, there's, there's two components to ATAG. Uh, the first one is making sure the user interface itself is accessible. And we've done a good job of that in Drupal 7. The back end is pretty accessible. Um, but it's also uh, trying to ensure that when, when users are creating content, that they're reminded of, of uh, accessibility and, and are, are encouraged to go off and to, uh, to make, uh, make better choices about their, their content when they're creating the content. Uh, so there are, um, there's things like required help text so that, or there's help text to explain the accessibility implications of, uh, of some of the things we've added into core. Uh, there's also, uh, in, I think uh, 8.1, we, we, we brought in this, uh, a spell check. 
Um, it's, uh, you know, screen readers are great, but they aren't really good at pronouncing misspelled words. So if you can add a spell checker into your, uh, into your WYSIWYG editor, you can address some of those problems and, and uh, hopefully uh, solve some confusion for, uh, for the blind community. Um, and for that matter, other people who are using uh, you know, screen readers to go off and, and to read content uh, to them. Um, the, uh, I think that the, the uh, accessibility does require uh, constant vigilance. It's not something, it's a, it's a journey, not a destination. Um, the WCAG comes with three standards. There's A, AA, and AAA. Um, if you ever get an RFP asking for a AAA website, don't ever bother replying. It's not possible under uh, using any complex website. Maybe for one or two pages, you can go out and, you know, a really simple site, you can make it AAA compliant. But AAA is really something that you want to strive for. It's things like to say, if you want to beat the checklist and exceed that and try and find ways to go off and to, to make your website as, 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 to remove as many barriers as possible, how do you do that? And AAA gives you some great ideas to make that possible. Um, it's important to remember that legislation is changing, um, and uh, right now, um, any organization that, that is currently required to, to, to meet Section 508 requirements is probably going to have to be learning the WK 2.0 requirements pretty quickly, because that's what the Department of Justice is, is holding organizations to. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, you know, there's an ecosystem of technology that, that is changing all the time. So, you know, um, in the last couple of years, we've been all excited about uh, mobile devices and mobile first development. But, you know, in five years time, who knows what we're going to be struggling for and, and where the technology is going to be. Uh, are we looking at embedded devices in, in, our, in ourselves or, or how, you know, what kind of challenges are we going to be trying to, to, to solve to, to keep up with, with, uh, with the internet? Um, uh, there's also uh, personalization, um, so um, people are, um, there are, are people who have uh, very different needs. Uh, so some people need to have high contrast in order to go off and to, to see the website. Some people need to have low contrast. Um, if, you're, if you have low vision, you want high contra contrast. If you're dyslexic, generally you want to have low contrast. Um, I had a blind user uh, a while ago who who wanted, who, who had some sight and he, he navigated uh, the web with some, some vision. Um, but uh, we used a, a JPEG to make a nice, beautiful uh, front page, but, uh, but we couldn't, um, but he, he wanted to, there was too much contrast for him. It was too much glaring white content, so it gave him a headache when he looked at the screen. So we had to change that JPEG into a, a PNG file so that it was, so he could, it would be, be transparent. When he changed his CSS, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't go off and, and, and give him a headache when he looked at the site. Um, so we need to, to address accessibility issues by baby steps. We can't do it in one giant leap. And uh, there's a, a bunch of tools that I've listed here uh, about uh, th that you can use, and, and I'll be making these slides available and, and link them from the, the, the website so you can take a look at them. But WebAIM, Tenor, um, QuailJS, the, uh, the, the Tenogram Contrast Finder, these are some, some good, uh, you know, open tools, not necessarily open source, but ones that you don't have to pay for. Uh, there's also the WK Contrast Checker and the Chrome Contest a Contrast Analyzer that are also quite good. Um, the, uh, the, the, I also want to, you know, th th there's a phrase about uh, nothing about us without us, um, and uh, so often people with, with disabilities are not included in the process. And it is important to try and engage people with disabilities in evaluating and looking at your website. Um, ultimately, they're going to, to know a lot more than any of these automated tools are. Um, it's also useful to go off and engage with third parties and have a, a third party review the content you're, you've been doing. Just think about uh, a third party accessibility checker as, as a, um, uh, j just like having an editor for your book. If you're, you know, it's, it's just somebody to go off and to, to check things that are obvious, uh, to make sure you haven't missed anything and to, to give you a, a, a review of how to improve in the future. Um, so I have another kitten photo. Um, in this case, uh, to highlight, it's not just free as in beer for open source. It's not just free as in speech, um, but it's free as in kittens. So if you don't find ways to contribute back to open source projects, um, if you don't find ways to nurture them and to love these projects, and to see that, that you're able to put time, money, and resources into them, you're, you're not going to get a, 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 a playful cat when it grows up. You're going to get a ferocious, fer, feral feline. So um, think about ways to contribute back to the community. And that's it.
there any questions? Yeah. There are some good tools that that, uh, that do work with drop down menus. Um, it's just a matter of trying to go off and find a, a good menu to adopt. Um, a lot of them haven't been tested all that well for uh, for keyboard only users. Uh, well, no, not not using hotkeys like the the hotkey idea or access keys. They're a great idea, except it's really difficult to to implement properly. Um, there are. Um, you basically need to, the, the answer for, for, for uh, hotkeys is to, to allow users to personalize them and to say, okay, we want to have, um, you know, uh, shift alt s to go off and to get to the search bar. We want to have, have uh, you know, this combination to, to, to jump to, to something else. And, and, you know, there's, there's so many different web pages in so many different languages and for so many different contexts. And the, the uh, assistive technology tools are already using so many of those hotkeys already. So you can find, you know, you might have a, a great set of combinations that, you, that would work well for you, but it doesn't work for JAWS users, or it doesn't work for NVDA users, or it doesn't work for, for whoever. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's very um, personalized on, on that side. Um, in terms of the knowing where you are, I mean, not knowing where you are on a screen is, is, a, is a huge deal, and it's, 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 it's frustrating that often more, more effort is put into um, providing uh, CSS uh, to highlight the, the on-focus um, uh, behavior for, for, uh, for links and, and other elements than, than uh, for, for keyboard only, uh, because or on, on hover versus uh, on focus. And, and there's, uh, the, the, the CSS lint project is being used and, and does identify where CSS isn't matching. So if you have hover and not focus, or sorry, focus, or sorry, hover but not on focus, it'll, it'll provide an alert and ask you if this is something that, that should, be, um, should be addressed in, in, uh, in, with hover as well. Um, but, but it does take testing and evaluation and retraining because people are used to doing it just for the mouse. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, just one way to go off and to know where it is. And, and there, you can look at examples. I think the Pass Yellow group has a nice one where you're tabbing through the interface and every link that, that it clicks on is, is, uh, is, is provided in, in super high contrast mode. So you can sort of see that link. You can see right where you are. There's no guessing where you are. Um, you can see, you know, it's, it's, it's immediate. And uh, more sites should be doing that. And there's, in fact, an open issue queue in Drupal 8 to, to, to add that in. So. Um, it's, it's hard to go from find the design pattern that works, but, but it's, a, it's an important one. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Um, just wondering about those of us in the room who uh, are tasked with implementing designs where the designer's not that accessibility minded. Um, are, there, are there good solutions for if you have a kind of a low contrast design that looks really cool to someone with 20 20 vision? But, uh, you're kind of aware that this isn't going to fly. Right. Uh, are, are, there, are there solutions in place other than having an alternative high contrast theme or something like that? that you can use a high contrast theme, but that's not really, that, that's not a good pattern. You want to be able to have, like, I think that the solution is to give your designer a pair of dirty glasses and have them sort of look at it when it's, you know, either that or when they're yeah, hungry. Yeah, you know what designers are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They were the nicest, newest glasses. <laughs> then just they, they smear just some. The finger and walk away. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a challenging thing with, with designers, and, and I don't know um, what is the best way to go off and to, to, to deal with that, except by going up and, and, and I mean sometimes even corporate style guides have, have major problems with them. So um, so yeah, but. Right. Yeah. 
and let's make it nine point fonts as well, just because nine point font is just so cool as well. So, so um, it's really cool to see that Drupal eight has like the Drupal announce and the tabbing manager um, that any you know any developer can can then take advantage of in their module. Their mm -hmm. Is there anything similar for drag and drop interfaces? And how is because I know that uh, there's some like I do a lot in the panels ecosystem, and if you're using the panels in place editor. Then you have this drag and drop, right. uh, which is not uh, keyboard accessible. So, is there anything in Drupal 8, either in core or in contrib, you know of, to make either an accessible drag and drop or a very easy alternative to it? The the only thing we've come up with so far is is the the the, the code in core to disable JavaScript around that or to disable it. Right? Is is for for uh, the drag and drop for tables, and and that was done in Drupal 7, and it's. It's not a great solution, um, and uh, but there's nothing for, for for panels that you can you can rely on. Okay, so so that only works for legal. That's like for row weights. And yeah, stuff. that's right. Okay, nice. Yeah. Oh, well, you're. Uh, If you're con con contributing code back and people aren't responding, I mean, sometimes it's a matter of, of going off and, and uh, having more people join on, on the voice. So feel free, feel free to reach out to me if you can, if we can have a few more people involved in these issues where, where there's accessibility improvements, improvements being proposed, or even um, areas where a bug is identified and, and, and uh, you want to go off and, and address that. Um, the more people are involved in, in looking at an issue, the more likely it is to get solved, um, most of the time anyways. Um, but in terms of an example of a model, that I would, would recommend. I don't have one in, in particular to, to, to point you to that's going to have, have those, those issues solved, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the simpler the better and uh, for both usability and, and accessibility. Yeah, we, just, we have a lot of clients asking for mega menus, unfortunately, and we're just trying to figure out if anybody has made a module that's already compliant. So right. Does Berkeley, you've got one? I think SVG is great, um, the, especially because you can go off and take, it's, it's, it's better for mobile, it's, um, it's like all kinds of, you can add titles into the SVG graphics, so you can provide that semantic meaning right in there, you don't need to have an alt text, you can have that built into the image, which is great, because sometimes the image gets so separated from it, um, but there's also challenges, like I, I still haven't got a good answer on how to do multilingual with SVG, because if you've got the text inserted into the SVG, you can't necessarily have it available in multiple languages. Um, and also the images may change depending on the context. So if you're putting the title, uh, the, the description into the title of the SVG file, and you're, you're presenting it in multiple different contexts, you may want to have various different alt texts available for, d depending on how you're presenting it. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Did you have a quick? Right. And you could have popped the window and it's something not In Drupal 7? Yeah, there, there are some problems, and there's also when you're um, in Drupal 7, um, it doesn't, uh, I don't think it tells you when the, the upload has failed. Um, in Drupal 8, it does tell you when the upload has failed, but it doesn't tell you when the upload is successful. So, it's, it, it needs work. So, so everything you, you do with the pop-up window, 
I think that the, the modal dialogues in general are working, and that they're. Um, I think that, that that's leveraging the, the um, that the work that was done by jQuery UI, um, and I think that that's tested and worked. But uh, but again, I'd have to know specifically about what browser you were or what assistive technology you were using to navigate that uh, the the, uh, the upload form and, and where the problems were. Okay. I'm wondering if there are any resources for finding third-party reviewers for accessibility. Funding for, for which? For uh, reviewers for um, for your site, your accessible site. Like you suggested that uh, you should find third-party reviewers. For yeah. Your uh, are there any resources for funding? No. Like no. I no. feel like that's the biggest challenge we face is that we sometimes implement um, accessibility features and we're not sure if they're actually accessible or if they're based on, on the old, outdated uh, ways of there's a huge problem in the, the, the way that our society is dealing with accessibility is that all of the money is downstream, it's on the end site. The money isn't at fixing the problems at source. If we were looking at how do we, like there's so many people who want to have an, an accessible video module or an accessible mega menu or to have, have, uh, have something that's tested and, and validated and that they can maintain over time. Um, but nobody's putting money in that. Everyone's putting money in the lawsuits and the, the work around repeating, re redoing the wheel, or recreating the wheel over and over and over again um, for each individual site. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a huge challenge and there should be resources that are going into testing and evaluating and engaging with, member, with, with people with disabilities to see that, that we can make these tools better and more effective for them. But yeah, no. <laughs> so. Thanks again. Um, uh, hopefully there'll be a chance to talk more. There's another session that's tomorrow morning. Helena has a session uh, that's worth going to to look at uh, uh, how to go off and, and to uh, a number of things, but also for how to sell accessibility to your clients.